Hello, my name is Tia Gadowski and I'm doing this PowerPoint presentation on the fitness analysis that personal trainers should do before their client partakes in physical activity. For your initial interview, you want to assess compatibility, develop goals, and establish a client-trainer agreement. The compatibility, you want to describe services available. You want to describe all of the machines that you have in your gym, any equipment that they're going to be using, and any classes that they could participate in. For the explanation of the personal trainer, you want to describe yourself. You want to tell your client your education, your experience, certificates, uh, any expertise or specializations that you have, your mission statement, success rate, and unique features that you may do in your gym. And you want to evaluate your client's readiness. So you want to know if they can participate in vigorous activity or if they need to do moderate activity, anything like that. And the suitability and appropriateness also falls under the compatibility. For goals, you want your client's goals to be very specific. You want them to be measurable, action-oriented, realistic, and time-sensitive. You want their goals to have direction and motivation. For your agreement, your agreement is legally driven. So this document is going to include the services that you are providing, any parties involved, your expectations, timeline, cost, and payment process. You also wanted to include your cancellation policy, the termination of contract, and the circumstances that could void this contract. Your PARQ, which is a physical activity readiness questionnaire, is the first thing that is normally done during an initial interview. This is a self-recall. It's a series of seven questions. Uh, you're just going to check yes or no for them. The advantages of using a PARQ are that it's cost effective, it's easy to administer, and it's sensitive, meaning that if someone is ready to participate in physical activity, then they can, and if they're not ready and they need to go see a physician, it's an easy transition. You can show them right away that, hey, I answered yes to a bunch of these questions, I should probably go see a physician right now. You are also going to do a health and medical questionnaire, and this is just a series of questions that asks about your current and your history of health and medicine. It, this also helps to identify any risk factors that could come up while training in the gym. Risk stratification. This is the use of age, your health status, personal symptoms, and coronary risk factor to classify individuals. For risk stratification, there are three risk levels. You can be low risk, moderate risk, or high risk. For low risk, that means you answered one or less risk factors on there with a yes. For that, you do not need a medical exam before you begin to exercise. For moderate risk, that means you answered two or more risk factors with a yes on the paper. That means that you don't need a medical exam for moderate exercise, but if you do plan to do vigorous exercise, it is highly recommended. For high risk, you are symptomatic. You either have a known cardiac, pulmonary, or metabolic disease, and then a medical exam is highly recommended for you to do moderate or vigorous exercise. For low risk, you want to go over the PARQ, make sure that all the answers are no, then you'll go to the medical questionnaire, make sure that everything listed on there looks good. There's nothing of concern in there. Um, if nothing is related to CAD or orthopedic concerns, then you can continue with your contract. For low-risk individuals, you don't need to go do a medical examination, and uh, you also do not need anyone to stand by while you are administering a test. For moderate-risk individuals, the medical examination is not required, however, it is recommended. Uh, to do vigorous activities, a medical examination is very highly recommended. To do sub-maximal exercise tests, physician supervision is not required. But to do a maximal exercise test, a physician supervision would be recommended. For a high-risk individual, it is recommended that current medical examination and exercise tests be performed prior to moderate or vigorous exercise. 
it's recommended that a physician supervise submaximal or maximal exercise. For a referral, if someone is a moderate or high risk, you're going to want to refer them to a doctor. So once the medical clearance is recommended, the personal trainer will refer the client to a physician. There is a physician referral form that the personal trainer will be able to give to the client. For my assessment, for a low-risk individual, I would administer the proper test to reach their goals. For example, if they wanted to run a marathon, I would do an endurance test. Then make them an exercise routine that is personalized for their specific needs and wants. You want an assessment that is going to show you what this client can do, and then you need to make sure that their routine is just for them. You don't want a client coming in telling you they want to run a marathon, and then you end up doing a strength routine with them. For a moderate individual, I would not let them partake in vigorous activity without referring them to a physician. I would administer a moderate test that would give me an idea of where they're at physically. Then I would set up a personalized routine for them, and if they wanted to continue on to do any vigorous activity, I would refer them to a physician to be cleared before I let them continue on with training. For a high-risk individual, I would not test them or create a workout plan with them until they brought back the physician referral form and a clearance stating that they are allowed to partake in physical activity. Remember that safety is always key when working with clients. Your clients are trusting you to be a professional and to have their best interests in mind. 